So then, we are back with the modern understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original documents of the Hebrews of old, from the prophets of Israel, giving us then the bearings of the future, so then we can position ourselves for the time of the end. And the very plan of the end can't be changed. Whatsoever the nations decide to do, the time and the prophecy must be then implemented and we understand precisely the Chinese are going to be then the people in charge of the trades of the world. It is coming then in a very near future, absolutely very simple friendly usage of their understanding of the doing the trade or their software computerized system of trade so then the nations can easily do trade via computer they already have this system in their country and they are only waiting for the proper time as we understand from the scripture in the eighth chapter of Revelation shows us the third part of the ships those are the indicators saying to us very precisely there is a country that's going to lead then the market of the end so it's very wise for each nation then taking the time and evaluating their perspectives of their futures and lining up with China. It's very important because this plan won't ever change until the time of the end, until the closing of the age. If you begin to evaluate then the temperature of the earth is already changing Climate change is very evident. Islands of the Pacific are drowning. There are obviously movement of people and relocations in the Pacific. So then you can easily understand that the scripture then are very precise. And the scripture obviously is a set of Megillus. So these are extremely precise and then gives you the bearings on how you should then maintain the line of production and then investment of your country. That's why then there is at the end of time the Chinese then put in charge because they have the least expensive products on the planet. And no nation can beat their prices. They truly have the market in their hands and then the nation should line themselves up because they are going to be doing trade with the entire world. There is no avoidance from it. So then we take the time, then we indicate to those people lined up with China's system. Very precisely we understand then Daniel the prophet he was a statesperson. He was then, during the time of his duty, serving then the king of Babylon and others. However, during the time he was serving then, he gave us the prophecies of the end. And he himself said that at the end they would try then to make amongst themselves a monetary system where they try to come together and unify but they would not adhere to each other. He is speaking this precise time and they did this during the time of the deceit. They thought because of the time of the rulership of the Gentiles upon the earth given by the Messiah himself and he spent two days with the Samaritans indicating a thousand each. That's the time of the rulership of secular Gentiles. However, during the second thousand, when you read further revelation, you find that his people would be in charge for a thousand years. He ascended, then previously he was born. You count then a thousand years. What was the most important event? The destruction of Jerusalem and the tomb. There were cities, many of them, during the time after Yohanan. Yohanan was the first. So 
So then there were many cities around Asia and then the people began to be instructed. From the standpoint of the trade of the kingdom to come government, they were taught properly. That's why they are so prosperous. So then, understanding from this viewpoint, then you can conclude China is going to lead the end of these ages markets. And they are so smart, they are going to make in a such a way that any person with a personal computer anywhere in the world can do trade with China. That's why then when you read then from the 8th chapter, 10 chapters later, you find the nations and then the peoples and then kingdoms do, do trade with China. The software language of the computer system they're going to put out, then people they're going to start doing trade while rebuilding. And then the cities also are being rebuilt. So then the plan is becoming much more evident because these plans can't be changed. These are set in motion, they can't be changed. Then the nations can rebel against it. Is it going to work? No. It's not going to work. Because Daniel said at the end they would try to adhere to each other during the time of the deceit. That's why they try to adhere to each other because they did this during the time of the deceit. We are no longer during the time of the deceit. The deceit ended in 6009. We are in 12. So we are then during the time of the reduction of from 6031. We don't know for how long this reduction is going to be, but we know the context of the situation, then the holy cities are returning. So then it started making more sense. When you begin to read it in Revelation, when you come to the 20th chapter, then you read camp and then holy city. That did not make any sense. The translator did not understand. They were going through piles of megillas. They didn't know how to start because those were neatly put together per season, per prophecy. And that's how you read in Hebrew. The Torah today, when they sewn the uh, pieces together, those were wrong. Try to understand, Israel then became disobedient and they, they lost the ability of reading from the prophecies. They lost a track because they rejected the Messiah. But the Messiah moved on. So truly during the time of Yohanan you had the Torah taken apart. Not modified. But taken apart per season, per prophecy. That's why then when the translators they tried to translate Revelation it was a nightmare. They couldn't understand. So then when you read the 20th chapter, then the altars, each of those having a camp, but rather than camp, he was speaking of the cities. Go to the four around the world and form holy cities. Those were for the set apart, elected to go around the world and form holy cities. Then when you understand, then the starting of Revelation, you find those seven cities. Those are then holy cities. And those are going to be rebuilt. Those were active during the time of Yohanan because there were situations over there going on and the Messiah was aware of them. And he pointed out the problems and they had to get themselves straightened out. But then he also gave them each of those cities a specific angel 
with the shofar to sound during the time of vengeance. So obviously those places are going to be rebuilt. But then nations, they can't come together anymore and rationalize what they're going to do because there is already a plan in motion. If they think they can scoundrelize the plan and scoundrelize themselves, they are very mistaken. There is not a time for any other action other than making deals with China. Europe is breaking up because of the Euro crisis. There are more nations in trouble than anybody else. They are not giving bailout money already for some of the nations, so you can understand what are those nations are going to do since they are bound by the loyalty of this euro. They have to be bailed out. There is no way of going out of it because they are part of a system. So they thought if they could come together during the time of the deceit, if any of them would go down, then the others would help, wasn't it? At least that's what they thought. So it didn't work that way, did it? Then the situation in Mideast. That's very bad also. Syria is being torn apart. And they are already going to the other countries, then they are becoming a burden. Not because they are unwelcome, but only because of the simple fact of a lot of them going to the other land. And then the only recourse is for them then after the war returning to their homes and have to make a deal with China. Because nations, they can't deny the uh, absolute precision of the scripture. What they had in their hands previously was an absolutely scandalized scripture. Not worth a biscuit. So they understand what they had in their hands, the value of a ship's biscuit. They understand there is the real scripture. And boy, if you read from those, then you can understand the plan of the future. Nations coming and doing trade with China. There are emerging countries with vast natural resources, and they're going to start to develop. Where do you think they're going to get the products from? So then Europe, the best for them is to dismantle this junky euro and get to their senses. In other words, they have to come to the reality. It didn't work. It is ridiculous for this monetary system to continue because it's already breaking. The other countries broken, they are going to demand bailouts. Because they are bound by the same contract. In Germany and France are the leaders of them, so they have to come up with the money. Now if they are going around trying to drag others in their plan, then it's not very smart to whomever they are making plans with. So quite honestly, they should come together and finish up with this euro. And then Germany return to Marx and then obviously France, Franks and the other countries to their own monetary system. So they can start doing trade. And then we are in harmony with the prophecy of Daniel. As he said himself, at the end they would try to come together 
And then they would not adhere to each other. And then, obviously encouraging other countries, they are emerging to do trade with China because then the people, they are going to try then do trade with China so they are going to then develop. But we understand the levels of development. There are countries yet, they don't even have in television, not even a radio. It's a great sign of then wealth for them is to have a nice road, lights on the road, and then a nice house and a refrigerator, a radio. That would be a sign of wealth. For those that already have it, it would be more. Because China is already perceiving that they are leading the world, this market. They are only waiting for the euro to break and our country to break. That's what they are waiting for. Then when we do whatsoever we can to exhaust ourselves of our resources, then when we are busted and broken, the Chinese comes over and, would you like some rebuilding? Got some materials for you, can rebuild. So why then make a gamble in trying to overdo and try to go over this perfect plan given from heaven? Why go against it? Should be in line with. So then the whole situation is harmonized. And then as we understand from the uh, prophecy of Yerushiahu regarding then the layer of restoration, then the country of Cush, beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, that's going to be the first city. A city from many cities in the future. And then while then the people are tabernacling with Most High, then we back home rebuilding and then we are then ordering rare materials from Congo so then we can continue on with the technological advancement that's the only type of product we can produce because we can't go against the cheap products of China neither should the leaders lie to the people and be scoundrel themselves and say to the people oh we're going to take on China and Crack them down, I'm going to crack them down. Come on, think yourself, how are you going to crack them down? We owe nearly our entire country to them, how are you going to crack them down? What they have to do, only don't send any more products to us, then we are ruined the next day. So we have to maintain our composure and make a deal with them. Oh, we are rebuilding ourselves and we want easy payments. And then when they make those convoys to go to the Mideast to deliver their cargo escorted by the military, that's the clue for us to get out of there. It's on expense anyway. What are we are doing there for? We are involved with the South Sea, um, rather, but China Sea. What are we doing over there? It's not our fight. But then we stick our noses in many places. Then we have then, at some point, retrieve because it's their problem. Because it doesn't justify we try then to stick our noses in somebody else's country without having our then nation straightened out. Uh, we are nearly have no manufacturing. Our economy is yet recovering. So the more we retrieve, the more then we save. And then privatization. We must privatize the agencies. They are only expenses. They must be turned to profit private sector. 
Then we save the money from those places and then we invest in our economy. Generating jobs and extracting our own petroleum. Not so much of imports. The renewal of our grid. Usage of coal. Natural gas. And let China deal with the rest of it because they're going to take over the world anyway. So why are we going then to be against them for? So then we can even do more and then screw ourselves further and then later they take over anyway, so why do it? This time is a lost war. Best for us is simply then let Chinese take over nice and easy. Then they take over over there the uh, Middle East. They do their trade, convoys, escort it nice and easy. They deliver the cargo. Then they are responsible for the maintenance of the peace in the region. That's what the world wants. And we simply retrieve for rebuilding. As far as the United Kingdom, Another year or so, year and a half, they may not be together anymore. There is a referendum to get the uh, kingdom separated. The indication is very positively they would then be separated. And then they would be doing trade with China because when a nation then is separated from another, they're going to try to get the cheapest they can get to get their numbers built up, then making deal with China. So as the other country that was then separated, making deal with China. In Great Britain, as we know, they are already privatizing. So they are not playing around. And our junkie agencies must be privatized. That's the normal of any country. A great number of agencies of DHS must be then privatized. TSA, don't even talk with it. It has to be privatized, the entire enterprise. So then the private sector, as in San Francisco, takes over and then they have a very nice record of detection. FAA is no longer required. can be a private sector also. Because most of these computerized systems anyway. And there are inspectors of the private sector who can do their job. EPA agriculture department those can be turned precisely to the private sector so then the country releases itself from those huge obligations and then neither no return in terms of the benefits received from their services they are only expenses And then the private sector, they only receive a protocol on how to run the place and then they have some parameters on how to do it, they do themselves for a fraction of the cost. That's being responsible. That's what this country would do before the Second World War. That's how we are Americans then. When we understand then what to do when we have problems in crisis. So the best is then understanding we were given a copy of the scripture not worth a biscuit, not even this much. And then understand the proper scripture. We understand China is going to lead the world. There is no way out of it. So then we do what the president was speaking of. Working with other technologies. Higher technologies. So then we can do trade. Because we can compete with the cheap products of China. 
In order to do this, we have to have rare materials. It comes from Congo. Then there are other aspects then of the trade versus then the spiritual understanding of the false anointing. That's another layer that must be then explained later. Because so far the time of rebuilding a nation should be lined up. It's very serious. This time it's not playing around. During the time of the deceit they were going to and fro, blind leading the blind. At this moment, there is a defined plan for the end. And every nation should line up themselves. They either do these or they break, then they get lined up themselves. 